Welcome back to the Data Professor YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Chanen Nantan Senamad, and I'm an Associate Professor of Bioinformatics. On this YouTube channel, we cover about data science concepts and practical tutorials. So if you're into this kind of content, please consider subscribing. So in this video, we're going to cover about how you can build your own classification model using R and also the Iris dataset. In this video, we're going to use the caret package, which represents a collection of machine learning algorithms. And we're going to use the Iris dataset as an example. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so head over to the GitHub of the Data Professor. Links are down below in the description. So what you want to do now is you want to import the Iris dataset. So you want to run the library dataset. And then you want to import the caret package as well. And then the next step is to import the Iris dataset. So you can just control enter. Let's say that you have your own dataset and you want to check whether your dataset has any missing values. So a good practice is to check for that. So what you can do is run the summation function, as I have mentioned in the previous video, and then you add the function is.na, which will determine whether there will be any missing value or not in your iris data frame. So control enter. Okay, and when you build your classification model, by default, R will assign random numbers to the model seed number. So what you want to do is that you want to set the seed number to a fixed number. Okay, in this example, we're going to use 100. So the benefit of this is that when you rerun the same model 100 times or 2000 times or 10,000 times, you will get the same result. But if you don't set the seed number, each time you run the code, you will get different results. So for reproducibility of the model, we will set the seed to a fixed number. Okay, we'll set that to 100. Okay, and then the next step, we're going to do some data splitting. And you might be wondering, why do we need to split the data? because we want to simulate the situation in which we have a data set which we use to train the model. And then we want to see whether the model will be applicable to future data. So what we want to do is we have the iris data set. So we're going to split it into two parts. One part will be the training set, which we will use to create a training model. And then we're going to apply the training model to predict the class label in the 20% of the testing set. Okay, so how are we exactly going to split the data? We're going to split it into two parts. The first part will be the training set, which will represent 80% of the data sample. And the second part is the testing set, which will represent 20% of the data set. And so we're going to use the 80% to build a training model. And then we're going to apply the training model to predict the class label of the testing set, which contains 20% of the data set. Okay, so how are we going to do that? We're going to define a variable called training index. So essentially, we're going to then use the create data partition function. And then we're going to specify the name of the class label, which is the species variable. So then we say iris dollar sign species. Okay, so that's the class label, comma, P equals to 0.8. So this will specify that 80% will go into the training set and then list to be false. Okay, so let's run this and let's see what happens. Click on the training index. So what we get is the index of the data set. So essentially it's kind of like the ID of each row. Okay, each flower will be assigned an ID, a unique ID. Okay, because there's 150 flowers. So we're going to get 120 rows here. As you can see, it's randomly selected out of the 150 flowers. And 120 flower will represent 80% of the data set, whereas the remaining 20% will be in the testing set, which will be in the subsequent lines of code. So what we do here is then within the bracket, we're going to specify the name of the training index, which we have seen previously that it is essentially a list of the ID in the iris data set. And in order to create a subset containing 80% of the original iris data set, we're going to specify the following lines of code. We're going to create a variable called training set. And within there, we're going to type in iris bracket and then training index comma and then closing bracket. And so we're going to get the 80% subset of the initial 150 flower, which will contain 120 flowers. Okay, and then for the testing set, we're going to add a minus a dash in front of the training index, and then we're going to get the remaining 20%. 
Okay, so let's have a look at the testing set, which contains here, as you see, 30 observations and five variables. So here you will have a total of 30 flowers. Okay. And in the training set, you have a total of 120 flowers, which represents the 80%. Okay, here, there's 120 flowers. Okay. 150 is the ID number. Okay. If you do a count, it's 120. 20 flower for the training set and 30 flowers for the testing set. So how about I give this as your homework? So you can copy the code from the previous video on how you can make a scatter plot and then create scatter plot for the 80% subset and the 20% subset, which represents the training set and the testing set. So you want to visualize how does the data actually look like for the 80% subset and for the 20% subset. Okay, so this is your homework. So give it a try and let me know in the comments whether the distribution are roughly the same or are they quite different. So let's scroll down to the code and then we will see that the following code will allow us to build a support vector machine model using the polynomial kernel. So as I've mentioned previously that the carrot package contains a lot of machine learning algorithms and there's more than 20 or 30 algorithms that you can choose from. And so in this example, I'm going to use the support vector machine polynomial kernel. And for each learning algorithm, there will be hyperparameters that you will have to optimize. But for this tutorial, is beyond the scope so I'm not going to cover that here so we're going to just set the default of the C parameter to 1 okay and scale equal to 1 degree equals to 1 so we're not going to optimize the parameters here okay so in this block of code it will create the necessary parameters needed to create your very own classification model okay so here we are going to use the train function and then parenthesis and then the species is the class label name. So let's say that your data set has a class label name of species, therefore you will specify species here. However, if your class label is something else, you will have to replace this with that particular variable name. Okay, and then data equals to the training set, which is the 80% subset that you will use to create the training model. Okay, and the method will be the SVM polynomial kernel. And whenever there is a missing value, it will perform omission. It will just delete it. And prior to building the model, it will perform some data preprocessing, which means it will scale the data according to the mean centering. So what it will do is for each variable, it will compute the mean value, and then it will subtract each value of each row. It will subtract with the mean value of each column. Okay, so for each variable, you will have a mean of zero. So after you subtract each value by its column mean value, and then the resulting mean, if you compute it for the second time, it will be zero. So I'm going to go over this basic concept in future videos, and I will show you graphically. But you can also try that yourself in an Excel file. And let me know down below in the comments how it goes. Okay, so because we're going to build the training model, therefore the train control function, the argument we use will be method equals to none. And this is the training model. So you might be wondering, what, what is a training model? And be below we have this thing called CV model. What's a CV model, okay? So let me explain it like this. A training model will essentially use the training set to build the model, okay? The training set, as we recall, is the 80% subset of the data set. So we're gonna use the 80% subset to build a training model. Once we have the training model built, we will apply this training model to predict the class label in the testing set, which represent the 20% subset of the original data set. Okay, so we apply the training model to predict the class label of the testing set. Okay, so that's the external set, which we will cover down below. So this training model will allow us to predict two different data set. It will allow us to predict the training set itself and also to predict the testing set. It might sound a bit confusing right now, but I'm going to cover down below as well in the subsequent lines of code. However, for a cross validation model, what we will essentially do is we will set the K fold to be 10 fold cross validation. By 10 fold cross validation, what does this mean? So the input 
data will be the training set, which represents 80% of the subset, right? So it will use the 80%, which is containing 120 flowers. And so the cross validation will be tenfold. So 120 flower will be divided into 10 sub groups and each subgroup will contain 12 flowers. Okay, let's, let's say that I have 10 subgroups which will represent uh, each of my 10 fingers. Let's say that I take out this as the left out fold. Okay, I'm gonna left, leave this out. So I have the remaining nine. Okay, I have the remaining nine. I'm gonna use this nine to create a training model. And once I've done that, I'm gonna use the training model to predict the class label of 12 flowers in this subgroup. Okay, this will represent the first iteration. And then the second iteration, I will take this subgroup back and I will leave this, the second group out. Okay, so the first subgroup, which was left out in the first iteration, will now constitute among one of the nine groups in the training model, okay? So I'm gonna use the now nine subgroup to create the training model. And once I created the training model, I will use it to predict the flower, the 12 flower in the second subgroup. Okay, this is the second iteration. And I'll do this on and on until each of the group will be left out one time. Okay, and then average over the prediction performance. So that will be the cross validation. Okay, so once you have built the model, then you want to apply the model for the prediction. Okay, so the code up here will allow us to build a training model and allow us to build a cross validation model. Okay, in the next three lines, we will be able to perform various prediction tasks. So the first line, model.training, I will use the predict function. So I will use the model that was obtained here, which is called model. Okay, so model here as the argument. And then I will apply this prediction model to predict the class label of the 120 flower of the training set. So this represents the training set prediction. Okay, that's the first prediction model that I will obtain. And then the second prediction model that I will obtain is called the model.testing. Okay, so I'm going to apply the training model to predict the class label of the 30 flowers. Okay, so this is the second prediction. Okay, so recall again, the first prediction model will use 120 flowers to create a prediction model and apply that prediction model to predict the 120 flowers. Okay, so that represents the first model, which is called the model training set. And then the second model is the model testing set will allow me to take the 120 flower, create a prediction model and apply the prediction model on the 30 flowers, which is the 20% subset. And in the third prediction model, I will use the training set, which has 120 flowers. As I have mentioned already, partition it into 10 part, right? Perform for 10 iteration, where each iteration I will use nine fold to create a training model, leave one fold out, right? And then apply the prediction model to predict the left out group and perform this 10 time and average over the performance. So that will be the cross validation. So let's run each of the lines of code. Oh, okay, I haven't run the training model yet. So let's build the model. Build the model. Okay, perform the prediction, perform the prediction of the three models. And then the next step is to look at the prediction performance. So I will do that by creating a variable called model.training.confusion. And then I'm going to use the confusion matrix function with the capital M matrix and then my arguments here will be model dot training comma training set dollar sign species okay which is representing the class label okay and then the second performance will be model dot testing and then comma second argument will be testing set dollar sign species okay and then the third performance will be the model dot cv because we use the cross validation model and then training set dollar sign species. Okay, so let's run each of that. Control enter, con control enter, control enter. And then I'm going to print the resulting performance. And here we go. 
So this first block of result will be the confusion matrix. So the confusion matrix will be a three by three table. So each column will represent the actual class label and each row will represent the predicted class label. So theoretically, in order to have perfect prediction, we should have a diagonal of 40, 40, 40, because there's a total of 40 Citosa. 40 Versicolor and 40 Virginica. And so we see that on the second line, there are 40 Versicolor that has been predicted to be 40 Versicolor, whereas one of the Virginica is predicted to be a Versicolor, as we have seen here, one. Okay, so we see that from this confusion matrix, one of the Virginica is mispredicted to be a Versicolor. So the overall statistic is that the accuracy is 0.9917. So that's the uh, one value which tells us the performance of the prediction model. And as I will show in a future video, accuracy is not the best way to measure the performance of the model, particularly if your data set is imbalanced. Okay, I'm going to tell you which prediction performance metric you should be using in order to evaluate such results without any bias of the distribution that are unequal for the class labels. And below there is the statistics by class. So it will give us the sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, negative predictive value, prevalence, detection rate, detection prevalence, and the balance accuracy for each of the three flower class. So in order to look at the performance of each of the three model, I will just control enter and then I will see the performance, right? So the accuracy of the testing set is 0 0.9667, and I get to see the confusion matrix as well. So here I see that out of the 10 Versicolor, nine of them have been predicted to be Versicolor, whereas one of the Versicolor is predicted to be a Virginica. Okay, so here we also see the confusion of the prediction model. And let's have a look at the cross-validation set. Okay, performance is also pretty good and accuracy 0.9917. Okay, and then the next block of code would give me the feature importance. So I will create a variable called importance and I will be using the var imp function. Okay, and let's have the plot of the importance. So I'm going to see for each of the iris flower class, I will see which variable were the most important for the prediction. For all of the iris flower, we can see that the petal length was the most important variable, followed by the petal width, followed by the sepal length. For Virginica, the sepal width did not influence the prediction result, whereas for Citosa and Versicolor, all four variables were affecting the prediction performance, whereas petal length and petal width were the most important feature for all three flower subclasses. Class, whereas sepal length is important for Citosa and Virginica, and to a lesser degree, Versicolor, whereas sepal width was only influencing Citosa and Versicolor, but not Virginica. Okay, so this will allow us to see the contribution of the importance of the variable to the prediction of the class label. Okay, so you see that the default color is blue, and if you want to change it to red, add the argument col equals to red and then the circle will be red color. Okay, so this concludes this video. And in future video, I will be showing you more R data science project. So please stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you in the next one. But in the meantime, please check out these videos.